Yes, the sound of the bell. You know what that means. The WWE Corner, and this week's corner is uh, WWE Extreme Rules, or Extreme Fools, for people that believe it's anything (laughs) extreme this Sunday. Uh, Predictions, part of the show. (sighs) Twelve total matches. Jesus. This, including the two pre-show matches. Yes, there's two pre-show matches in a B-level pay-per-view. Two pre-show matches, and guess what? Only one of them is an Extreme Rules match. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. We have a cage match too, but and a and a shark cage. Don't forget the, the shark cage. Ca- shark, yeah. Exactly what I said. Extreme Fools. If you go into this pay per view expecting and how they promote it, they, I, I love the way they promote Extreme Rules. Like even now with their their promos now, and all, all this carnage and stuff. Then there's literally only going to be two out of the twelve matches that are going to be anything like that. If not oh anything, like close to it, dude. This this week when Alexa Bliss attacked Nia Jax with a Kendall stick, I'm like, oh my gosh, don't you dare make it a Kendall stick on a pole match. Don't you freaking dare. Don't mess with me, Vince. Uh, don't do I, it. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Uh, I know. I know. Brian's excited for this pay per view. He's just he's just ecstatic as hell. Hell. I, I don't. Yeah. It's it's gonna be. It's going to be extremely disappointing is what it's going to oh, be. I, I, have to, <laughs> I make a correction. I botched. There is a third match that has an extreme uh, stipulation. The, the, the pre-show match is a tables match between the New Day and Sanity. That was my fault. I, I apologize. It is labeled as a tables match, apparently. Yes. Okay. Oof. And what's so extreme about a shark cage match? Oh, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Why? Why are if, we having if, a shark If cage Ellsworth match? <laughs> turns the, the, the certain way, he'll fall out of it because I... <laughs> I doubt the shark cage is going to contain that skinny cockroach, unless they they've made the bars fucking intertwine with each other. And I I don't know how he would doesn't get out. I don't know how he doesn't stay in that shark cage. You know, I joked a couple of weeks ago and I said Shinsuke versus the dog that bit him at Extreme Rules. I think that would have been better than <laughs> who Shinsuke news bro- news Jeff on Hart. a dog and <clears throat> ding 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 news on the dog. He's not been fired yet. The dog is back to work, apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised Nakamura didn't eat him. So, justice for <laughs> Shinsuke. Whoa! Hey, whoa! Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Hey, hey. Ginger, we don't want our mics Ginger to shut here. off. Hey, we don't, want our, hey, we don't, want, don't want our mics to shut off, please. <laughs> <laughs> we already had that once. <laughs> Man, you'd be kicking it with Jinder way too much, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the predictions, guys. We'll start off with the pre-show. Uh... Announced, I think it was today or yesterday, uh, Andre Cien Almas is going to take on Sin Cara. So Sin Cara is, I guess they, they had a match on SmackDown that I didn't watch. Apparently it was good. Well, I guess I'll have to go yeah. back and watch it. That was actually probably the best match of the week for me. It was, it came so, out of nowhere. It was really, really good. You can tell these guys have been wrestling each other for I mean, 15 it, it, years. It was it's, really it's, good. It's good to know, Brian, but... Can you tell me what the logic and reasoning is that they have to have a rematch at Extreme Rules, especially in the pre-show? Because, because lucha stuff. Oh, because we have to fill eight hours. All right, we do pay per views extremely long now, and now we're gonna have an extremely long pay per view at Extreme Rules. You know, if you don't like an eight hour Extreme Rules, they can always make it two four hour Extreme Rules if you like. I'll just take a nap for four hours and I'll join in. <laughs> oh no! I no. Nap on Raw, oh so. no! Why did I mention Sin Cara? I knew that was gonna spark someone's attention and. Joining the chat is former co-host of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, Corporate Cappy. Uh, yes, I did <laughs> say Sin Cara. Is <laughs> officially this plan? Made... When he goes into the show, he's like, I'm he literally waits. not going to join in until someone matches <laughs> Alexa Bliss or Sin Cara. He shows up on the show as much as Sin Cara is on TV, so. No! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cappy's just trying to stay credible. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, see, I was against Sin Cara. I'm just... I really have nothing else to talk about because I'm watching this because literally they've been on TV once in this or twice in this whole entire feud. So I'm going with the NXT bias pick and I'm picking uh, Andre Cien Almas. I'm going with Cien Almas just because Zelina's hot. Oh my mm. god, is she ever hot? <laughs> and I'm also going with Andrade Cien Almas, El, De- El Eagle, but. Um... It just doesn't make any sense. It's bad enough he's on the freaking pre-show in his first pay-per-view, but oh, yeah. be on former, the pre-show and lose? Former top That's... guy at NXT on the pre-show. Oh. Ask Sanity about debuting and losing. 
Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, we're all three in accordance with uh, yes. Cien Almas. All right. Yes. Um, we got the other pre-show match, uh, the New Day versus Sanity in a tables match. Now, I haven't been watching SmackDown. Shocking. Um, Brian, is there... Have they been? Is it has the the build for this match been any good? Because I feel well, like it's it, been literally bland as hell, and there's nothing to it. Well, we got Gargano and Champa having a blood feud, and we have Sanity and the New Day fighting over pancakes. Oh, so it has been fucking terrible. So you have Sanity. I, oh, I hate this. That's what I hate about when they bring up people from NXT and they get they ruin them. You look at what Sanity was doing before they went up to um, the main roster, like that the, that huge match they had with the the back at NXT Takeover War Games, that War Games match. Oh my god, that was that 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 tag team match and the the War Games match was <laughs> that, yeah, was that was epic. Great. I still go back and watch that match. It was literally amazing. But Sanity goes from that and being one of the top teams on NXT to Pancake. Feuding. Yeah. Right. And Eric Eric Young gets pinned clean on SmackDown. Oh, the leader of the group. Even better. Even better. Gets pinned. I'm so, so glad. I'm, do, I, I'm so pissed you, I'm missing SmackDown. You pin their leader and then you throw them on the free show. Why not? Well, again, I'm going to go with another NXT bias pick. I'm going to pick Sanity to pick up the victory over the New Day. By I'm throwing gross. pancakes in someone's face to blind them and them falling onto a table. Yeah, they could have made it like a pancakes match since that's pretty much how Extreme Extreme Rules is going to be. So, But I am also going with Sanity just because I'm hoping just to have a little bit of hope for, for these guys. Mm-hmm. All right. I am going to go with... Hmm. You know, after Brian said that Eric Young got pinned clean, I'm gonna go with the New Day. Cause, uh, I, I, hey, no, hey, I want Sanity to win. <laughs> well, I can't trust Vince. So, sorry, I'm going with the New Day. They sell Over merch, or so under, I'm... there's gonna be a, one, at least one table made out of pancakes. Um, <laughs> it's just gonna be literally right. just pancakes. The only thing I'm hoping for in this match is that all three members of Sanity put all three members of New Day through a table at the same time. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe that's the saving grace. Who knows? But, yeah, we'll it's, see. it's not looking good. Um, so, we'll get into the only Extreme Rules match out of the entire card of uh, um, Extreme Rules this Sunday. Uh, and that is for the Raw Women's Championship between Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax, who we all know Ronda Rousey is going to get involved in some capacity because that is the most obvious thing on his entire card. If there is something else, I really would want to know. Um, well, she did. She she plugged that she was going to be at ringside for the match. How many so. times? Like eight times? <laughs> we know she's going to oh, be there. I, oh, God. Please, please don't do a John Cena where they keep going, focusing on <laughs> Ronda Rousey throughout the night. So we don't even need to pick a winner to this match. We just – who do we think is going to be facing Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam for the Women's Championship? Is it going to be Bliss or Nia Jax? And I so. see the direction of doing Alexa Bliss because that – I don't. I can't see a Nia Jax and – uh, Ronda Rousey being touted as the the women's championship match at SummerSlam. They got to make it big. So Alexa Bliss, who is somehow the top woman on Raw, and, and Ronda Rousey. So I'm going no finish on this match. Um, the only reason it's, it's going to be an Extreme Rules match is because Ronda is going to obviously jump the barricade. It's going to be one of those you can't control this match. Then you have Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss versus Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam. With Nia taking the pin. The only reason mm-hmm. it's happening is because Nia needs to take the pin. You're not going to pin yeah, Alexa okay. at a big I, show, and you're not going to pin I Rousey. I like that. But the, the, I've seen them pin big people before, like people you didn't think would ever get pinned. You, you never know on the main roster anymore. They can go any other direction. No one's safe on the main roster. Nothing's credible. and Nothing, nothing get, Nothing's pristine on the main roster anymore. It's all it's all free for all. So I, I, I yeah. see Ronda getting involved, uh, Brian, but... Mm-hmm. She's gonna get think, involved when the referee gets knocked out for you know somehow getting in the way of a Nia Jax splash in the corner on Alexa Bliss, and then that's gonna cause uh, Ronda Rousey to jump the corner or someone to roll out of the ring and slap Ronda while she's sitting at ringside, and she'll jump the barricade. 
uh, destroying, I'm going to guess, Nia Jax, since I'm picking Alexa Bliss in this opinion, in, in my opinion, just in kept past hitting her and Alexa Bliss stealing the victory. Yeah, I'm I'm going with the no finish and the triple threat just for two reasons. One, obviously, so Nia can take the pin. Um, but number two is I don't think anyone's ever done it, but they're going to have Ronda do the whole Hulk Hogan slamming Nia Jax and getting the pinfall. Mm. Mm. Okay. Because I don't, I don't, I mean, if I can be, I might be mistaken, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone do the whole body slamming Nia Jax gimmick. Okay. Michael, what do you think? I think, we'll see. It, it gets kind of difficult because, you know, marketing wise, I feel Alexa Bliss versus Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam is a lot better. But last year we got Natalia versus Naomi. So I don't, big match wise, I mean, and, and I don't want to see Nia Jax versus Ronda Rousey again. OK, if it was to a point where we never got to find out whether Ronda Rousey could make Nia Jax tap, then I might be a little bit interested. But the fact is, we've seen Ronda Rousey make Nia Jax tap out on Raw. I do not need to see this match again. It was good at the other pay-per-view, but I don't need to see it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with Alexa Bliss winning. I feel like, uh, let's see here, Ronda Rousey is going to jump the barricade. And, of course, Kurt Angle is going to call the cops. She's going to get a- arrested, escorted out, and that will cause a distraction for Alexa Bliss to do what she needs to do to put Nijax down. So there you go. Distraction, Ronda Rousey, arrested, and there you go. Alexa Bliss wins. All right. All right. So we'll move on to the WWE Championship match, AJ Styles versus Rusev. Um, I, I'd love to see Rusev with the Dirt to be title and the whole Rusev Day thing. I keep reading here and there rumors that they're really high on Rusev and they really want to do him a big push. I don't think this is the spot for him to win the Dirt to be championship, though. So I'm obviously going to pick AJ Styles here. And I'm hoping AJ Styles is a credible feud going into SummerSlam. <clears throat> Daniel Bryan, uh, we'll see what happens with that, or even Samoa Joe for that matter. So uh, I'm picking AJ Styles with this one. Yeah, I'm going AJ as well. I mean, as much as we all want to see Rusev finally win, especially on Rusev Day, it's not going to happen. Yep, I totally agree. I feel AJ Styles going to SummerSlam is a lot better. I, I love Rusev, but I just don't see it. And I feel Aiden English is going to be the reason why he loses. So we might actually see maybe Rusev versus Aiden English, and sadly in the pre-show of SummerSlam. So I go. really hope they get AJ, AJ Styles something, man. He needs uh, something good after this because really, right now he's literally taking the back seat to Kane and Daniel Bryan for whatever reason. So I really hope they go ahead with uh, pushing AJ Styles. Is the the one good thing on SmackDown and to at least make it credible watching because right now it's not and I really feel bad for AJ Styles because he is literally the best wrestler in the world and it doesn't deserve this so I I really do hope it is AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan because let's just say that Daniel Bryan chooses not to re-sign with the company just having that one great match at SummerSlam you need it exactly it's just it's just it is a Wrestlemania type match but I give no, I have no faith for any big WrestleMania matches anymore because if they could ruin a AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura Dirty B Championship match at this year's WrestleMania, I, there's no, there's no help and there's no hope for anything they do at WrestleMania. So uh, we'll move on to the tag team championships, the Raw ones, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt against the B team. Who cares? Who give? Who literally gives a shit anymore? And it sucks because I was so hyped for when the whole Woken thing was happening. Dirty B, they've literally just poured cold water all over it and I was kind of excited from when Bray Wyatt joining it but they really have done nothing with it I mean they're facing the B team really <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm sorry I can't I can't get behind this at all like there's no way I can ever get behind this yeah I think this is the shock shocker moment of the night for the pay-per-view I think B team actually wins um, only because they've been having Matt take the pin for the last month or so so maybe this is the moment where, you know, Bray gets tired of Matt. You know, they they cost each other the match. They split up, and you let the B team run with the titles for a bit. I mean, Broken Wyatt isn't doing anything with it. They don't really need it. So why not just give it to the B team? Let a new team kind of do something with it. They're entertaining. You know, as much as this whole mimicking Bray Wyatt and Matt has gotten old, they're they're not that bad. And Bray and Matt just don't need the belts. They don't even need to be together. Mm-hmm. It, it, I, normally, I would care and be pissed off that the B team would win, but hey, I really don't care that they would win. It really doesn't matter to me. 
I'm sucks. I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't. I can't. Yep. So move on. SmackDown. Oh, world's fast. Wait. I, oh, whoa. My, oh, sorry, whoa. Sorry. Oh, I forgot you didn't make your pick. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is how forgettable this match is. But anyway, uh, for me, I feel like uh, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt is just – this is just a transitional feud. And I feel like they're going to do Matt Hardy versus uh, and Bray Wyatt versus uh, Authors of Pain for SummerSlam. It just sounds a lot better than the B team versus Authors of Pain because yeah. they would be killed. But, uh, <laughs> well, by the way, what, what... – no, they just Matt put it in the, in the SummerSlam pre-show match. Yeah, we'll throw it in there. But by the way, Matt Hardy won the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. Naomi won the Women's ba- Battle Royale. What have they done? It's like I why that was even a match... thing. Exactly. Why have this match at WrestleMania anymore? If you're really not gonna push it with the people who win, I don't even think they announced Matt Hardy or Naomi as the as the freaking no, don't. battle Royale winners anymore. So it's like, well, Matt. I mean, look at Nakamura and Oscar. They won the rumble. What have they done? Nothing. Nothing. Well, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, Asuka's been fighting a man, and, uh, and Nakamura's getting bitten by dogs. So you know. Oh, the hell! <laughs> Asuka's back. Asuka's uh, fighting Shayna Baszler in NXT again. Yes, mm, yes, she I is. Would, I would love that. Uh, we'll talk about the other useless tag team match. We got the Bludgeon Brothers versus Team Hell No. And I would pray to God and say hell no to Team Hell No winning the titles here because that would just ruin all hope I have for anything with Daniel Bryan anymore. And I wouldn't blame him for leaving the company. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say the Bludgeon Brothers win because I'm just going to shockingly guess Kane and Daniel Bryan don't agree with something in the match. It causes them to lose the match. Shocker. Hint. Spoiler alert. And that's going to lead into a Kane versus Daniel Bryan match at probably Summer. No, that's it. I yeah. called it. I yeah. called it a month ago. I I can I, see I, it happening. It's I have no faith anymore. I really I, think the whole reason Team Hano is together is because Bryan hasn't signed the contract yet. It's horrible, and it's just it's just so convenient that WWE can go two ways with this. You know, if if Bryan agrees to a contract, then hey, you know we we get the Miz and Bryan at SummerSlam. If not. We get Brian versus Kane. Kane beats the crap out of him. Nice knowing you, Brian. So I, I'm I'm just picking the Butner brothers. I got nothing to say. So Butner brothers, for Brian Bludger brothers, and I'm gonna assume Michael Chow is picking the Bludger brothers, unless you have something else, Michael. No, I'm picking the Bludger brothers because when you because if Team Hell No wins. That means rematch at SummerSlam. And do we really need to see a rematch? I don't. And I just want to say, if WWE booking goes for the most predictable thing of Kane turning on Daniel Bryan, then this is absolute. I mean, I don't know. I might just turn off. I just might turn off the pay per view by then. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what to say. Women's Championship SmackDown. That's why we're gonna move on. <laughs> and uh, James <laughs> Ellsworth will be suspended above the ring in a shark cage. Carmella versus Asuka. If Asuka doesn't win this match, I have literally like a 2% faith in her. That'll change to zero if she doesn't win this match. If Ellsworth finds his way out of the cage, which, you know, most likely he will, and it causes them to, it causes Carmella to win the match, no faith anymore for Asuka. If he causes Carmella to lose the match, meh, it is what it is. We'll move on from there. Asuka and Carmella can never feud again. That's how I feel about it. So I'm praying to God Asuka wins this match. So I'm going with Asuka. Yeah, my only thing was why, why would they put him in a shark cage? It didn't make sense. And they're like, okay, well, to keep him from running away, keep him from getting involved, they already are having a cage match. Why not just use the same cage and make this at least interesting and have them in a cage? I I don't care about this match. I do see... Carmella winning though. They should have had a cage match. Yeah, I mean, a cage match. It's already up, and you know, at least you can make it entertaining. But a a shark cage. And you have Ellsworth climbing at the top, trying to do a cross body. He misses Oscar and lands on Carmella. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's too easy. It's and it's already gonna be there. Yeah. (sighs) Um, but I don't know. I don't know why. I I think Carmella wins. I I have. I'll lose faith. Complete faith in Oscar. I can't. She's done. She will lose all credibility. I will forget about her giant streak. It's over. I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see. I don't see them doing anything with her. I just, I don't see it. 
Michael. I'm sorry. Don't 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 future endeavor me here, but I just don't see him <laughs> doing anything with Asuka at all. <sighs> Come on, Brian. Jump on the bandwagon. I know. I, I get it. She's she's good. Sorry. Jump off the bandwagon, please. <laughs> do not ride the fucking WWE quote unquote lower end penis. Other word. Do not ride it. J- just see it from what I'm looking at. Asuka has the longest championship streak of all time and was the most dominant woman WWE has ever had. To going to lose to Carmella, and as much as I love Carmella, she's not credible enough to beat a one to be beating Asuka twice. But she absolutely Asuka not. Lost. That's the thing, Asuka already lost. Yeah, like, they killed that at WrestleMania. I know they, that. They, but they, they shouldn't be that. now now that just that one loss is there, they shouldn't be adding to it. They should but be building was, her back up again. That's the problem you always have with these streaks, is once they're done. It's, it's just like Goldberg. It's the Goldberg effect. You don't you have to. No, you do not have to. You do not have to. Just because a streak is done, you do not have to say, okay, now we can bury the shit out of her and make her a jobber. No. No, you don't have to do that. You can, just... still can, you can still make her a dominant champion and make her whip everybody's ass. That's what she is. That's her character. That is her. That's what it's, she was built up to be. Not built up to be this shit. I bet you Triple H is losing his fucking mind every time he watches this. The problem is you get to a point where the streak becomes bigger than the star. Look at Goldberg. Look at The Undertaker. The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak. After that, no one even wanted to see The Undertaker on WrestleMania anymore. Asuka had her streak. It's broken. It's just, It gets... I get it. She was good. She's great. But... But even without the streak, she the still would have been the same lady. She still would have been that girl to be that dominant. Are, but are we sure about that? Yes. I don't. I don't. You didn't watch NXT. That's why. I did. I saw. I saw. You I wa- saw you watch Oscar her entire NXT career from start to finish. I saw. I saw Oscar versus Ember Moon in a freaking bingo hall on an NXT show in LA. Like I've seen it. I just. But have you watched all her NXT takeover matches? Even though her, do you even know what her best NXT takeover match is? I don't watch the the B shows. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Point made. And I'm gonna tell you right now what it is, Brian. It wasn't even for a championship. It wasn't anywhere. To, it had nothing to do with her championship streak or anything. It was a one on one match with Emma at NXT Takeover London. Okay. That was her best NXT match, and that was amazing. Both those girls put on a fucking show in that match. For me, it would have to be best match was Oscar versus Nikki Cross in the street fight. Oh, like on the NXT uh, itself, the show? Yeah, that Su- was dope. Suplex off that ladder onto the announce table. I mean, that is the match that should be on this card, but eh, what can you do? I mean, my favorite Oscar match is her versus trying to cut a promo every week, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, I don't know what you guys you. are talking about. <laughs> I might have to future endeavor your ass. <laughs> the John Lauren ice your ass. <laughs> People no, bow. I, I, yeah. We'll move on. 30 minutes. <laughs> well, hold up. I didn't get to pick a match. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You can stop arguing for a minute. I can pick a winner. This is going here, as long yeah. as the next match we're about to talk about. <laughs> oh, man. But um, let's see here. You know what? The other year when, uh, when Enzo was in that shark cage, he got out, but – Big Show still lost the match, so I'm going to say that Ellsworth does get out of the cage, but still doesn't help, and uh, I'm hoping that Asuka wins, because for me, I mean, last year, I don't know, it's tough to call this match, because last year Shinsuke Nakamura lost two straight matches to Jinder Mahal, so I'm afraid for Asuka in this match, So, but I'm only hoping Asuka wins, because I feel like Asuka, for the fans, it would be a lot better going to SummerSlam, but... Promotion wise, she mm-hmm. doesn't speak English that well. I can see why he would want Carmella to do promotion for SummerSlam. So I don't know, it's tough. But I'm gonna just go with Oscar. Oscar Thank wins. You. Thank Maybe you. she might face Becky Lynch. Hopefully. So. Thank you. Thank you. It's not Thank happening. You. It's you not. Stop with this Ellsworth and Carmella nonsense. So we'll talk about uh, since we spent 30 minutes talking about. It, we'll talk about the 30 minute Iron Man match for the Intercontinental Championship between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. Now. This was literally one of the only matches I was looking forward to on Sunday, except I didn't. 
I would have loved for them to have had Kurt Angle ban Drew McIntyre from ringside, which I'm still kind of in the back of my hope, and they do some point during the pay-per-view before this match starts. Heck, leave up the shark cage. Uh, put Drew McIntyre in the shark cage. Do that. <laughs> Throw ball. him up there. He probably wouldn't even fit in, in there. that shark cage. <laughs> no, put, put put the sheep in there. Call it a day. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I'm not even. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> I sh- I don't like that he's been added to the match. I wish he was a little bit banned from me. Like, Ziggler and Rollins one on one with no interference in a 30 minute Ironman match. You're 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 getting up to Brett and Sean level. Like Blasphemy. that's. Like I'm sorry, but Ziggler and Rollins are our generation's Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. You can't disagree with me. No, they're they're both great. My only problem with this match is that Rollins and Ziggler have been in matches together the last three weeks for about yeah. twenty five to thirty minutes anyway. Yeah, that's so. If any, that's if this been, match and, ends, and they've been feuding over sheep. Yeah, and if this match ends in anything more than 1-0, it just doesn't make sense. Because all their other 30-minute matches were just one fall. You know what I mean? It just... I, mm-hmm. It's going to be a great match. They're, they're going to put on a clinic. This is the only one I don't I don't know. Uh, it's tough. I know. It can go either way. I'm going to go ahead and pick the, the homer pick here. I'm picking Seth Rollins winning the Intercontinental Championship, and I'm going to say the final score, 4-3. to three. In the Iron Man. Holy hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, what I want to see in this one is, we just talked about this, is storytelling. So I want Dolph to get, like, just a random super kick in in the first 30 seconds and have Rollins have to crawl back for those next 28 minutes. You know, just tell the story <laughs> that Tell the story that way. Tell the story that way because if not, then what's, like I just said, what's the point? They've been in a ring for 30 minutes on Raw anyway. At least, you know... We can tell a story of Rollins having to get those two pins to, for the win. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of see what you're, what you're saying here, but um, I know the Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart match ended one nothing. Maybe I'm, I'm going to take back my 4-3 pick, maybe make it more realistic. I'm going to say 3-2. I, 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 I'd love to see one nothing, Brian. Or maybe, like like you said, a quick win, and he's got to win two to win the match. Yeah, I think maybe this match. Do you think this match will go into the? the oh, I know there's a there's a rule that if it's tied at the end, they do like a a sudden death. Do you think it gets to that point? Like we get thirty two minutes, maybe thirty five minutes. I just think the quick one zero and then crawling back. They've been building Seth as this mega guy. I think this this is another you know building block if he's going to end up in the main event at SummerSlam or or after that the Rumble or whatnot. I think having him do the, the quick loss and and telling the story of him having to come back and being the Iron Man, I, I think it's gonna be one one or two. And Peculiar brings uh, up a good Rollins. point. Why do they add Drew if he if the if he's gonna be ejected anyway? I can see him getting ejected. So that's why I mean like they should have had Kurt Angle say, like, you're not you're not by the way, you're banned from ringside. You're gonna have to do this on your own, Dolph. They should have done something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I could see a scenario because a disqualification automatically is a point for the other person. So I could see maybe a thing where it's all tied up. And let's just say in the last 10 seconds, Seth Rollins tries to get a point by, let's say, slapping Drew McIntyre in the face. And Drew McIntyre gets so pissed off, he like Claymore kicks Seth Rollins and that causes the disqualification. The point goes, goes to Seth Rollins. So basically Drew McIntyre costs Dolph the match. So... They might do something like that. Then set up Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler, SummerSlam, maybe. So, yeah. All righty. So I'm picking uh, <laughs> Seth Rollins. <laughs> um, I'm going Rollins two two one. And Michael Chow. I'm gonna go with because I want to see Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, which probably is not gonna happen. I'm gonna go with Ziggler winning, so that frees up Ooh. Seth Rollins not having a title. And Seth Rollins going to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. You, you, and the score, you know, let's get crazy. I'm going to say 2,000 to 1,999. Good luck with that, that pick. Like, that sounded like, that sound like Kyle's first pick. <laughs> uh, anyways, we'll move on. We got the uh, – well, I want to save that one for the last. Um the Itsy Bitsy Balor versus Constable Corbin. So we got the uh, uh, the Saturday Morning Slam edition match. 
We got Smiley Bauer against Constable Corbin. It's, you know, it's just like fucking watching cartoons. Like, God damn, did they ruin both these guys. You have Finn Balor, who went from having this demon character all the time to smiling his ass off and being the um, leader of the LG whatever the fuck gay community when they haven't even gone the direction of him coming out as being the first gay wrestler. Or not the first, but, you know, he's he's come out. He's not the Open. first gay wrestler, but uh, Darren Young was actually that one. Um, so, to me, it's like, what the fuck is Finn Balor? Like, what what is he? And then you got Baron Corbin, who, a guy who listens to death metal, comes out and sings Itsy Bitsy Spider on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, okay, I'm done with talking about this match. I'm just going to pick Finn Balor. There you go. You guys talk about it. I'm picking the spider. <laughs> I can't um, talk about this shit. They've, they've ruined both these guys. I don't care. I, can't, I can give two shit. You can't find me two shits for me to give if, about this if match. You guys re- if you guys uh, don't recall, a couple of weeks ago, we had the argument when I said, Balor sucks. And I was like, who is he? What is he? And you guys try to defend him. He doesn't suck, though. He's just he's just in a but, shitty but, predicament what? right now. It's like Matt Hardy right now. He's He doesn't suck, and his char- the Woken thing's good. He's just in a shitty predicament right now. Yeah, my, my question was, what is he? You know, like, what what the hell is he? Why do I care? And you, you, you just agreed. It's like, what? I don't care. I really don't. Care but I also brought that they should guys. be doing this, this this demon thing. That the paper every paper should be demon was, Balor. Yeah, the demon was too easy. It was just too easy. But it worked. It worked so yeah. much for him in NXT. I don't know why they won't do it now. I mean, the merch you could be selling as a demon. The just even even like I said, if they wanted to do the whole gay character, whatever, fine. Have regular. No, I really hope they the wouldn't have do that. I have... wouldn't. I really hope they wouldn't have done that. Anyways, that's a terrible idea. I'm sorry. I'm not, I have nothing against it. It's just a terrible idea. It's it's better than, than nothing. It doesn't get with no. It wouldn't it wouldn't go well with. I'm not trying to say there to be audience is bad against gay people. It just it wouldn't it wouldn't be good. It's not what I can't. I, I, I can't. get it. I was thinking more of like the Doctor Jekyll Mister Hyde thing. Like just oh, that'd be freaking it, weird. But it's better than what is nothing. I mean, he is literally he's nothing. Yeah. It's sad. I, I really, I, I, we need. What about Baron Corbin getting his, his universal title match that he, he never, he never got his rematch for. <laughs> you mean Finn Balor? Finn Balor, sorry. So I'm just picking Finn Balor, uh, and uh, we got uh, Brian picking Finn Balor. I'll get Michael Chow make a quick prediction here because really don't need to say anything much about this match. So Michael Chow, prediction. Uh, uh, real quick, Cuba Girl said, "Why couldn't it be Finn Balor versus?" Uh... Uh, Kevin Owens, this would have been a lot better if they both said, you know, Finn Balor and Kevin Owens said, hey, they still have a rematch clause for the Universal Champion. So it would have been great. Kurt Angle just said, okay, I know it seems unfair, but uh, we're going to have a match between Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens, and the winner of that person will face Brock Lesnar. The the thing that they don't do in the main roster, number one contenders match. You can't be the number one contender when the champion's not there. Wow. (laughs) They did it last year, but uh, um, <laughs> for me, I just I just don't see any logic in Baron Corbin being this person in power and then losing, because then I feel like this feud is going to go on. So sadly, I like Finn Balor, but he's going to lose. Baron Corbin, he's going to win. So I pick Baron Corbin. I'm sorry, Constable Corbin. Constable, get it right. Anyways, we'll move on. Speaking of Kevin Owens, he's facing Braun Strowman in a steel cage match because, you know, monster in the bank and Kevin Owens have nothing better to do and let's not keep people off the pay-per-view if they have nothing you know if they don't really need a match let's, let's just shove them onto a pay-per-view for the, the hell of it just to make a pay-per-view Strowman against Kevin Owens Steel Cage what I, unless Sami Zayn comes and helps Kevin Owens win here like I, well, think, I think he's, he's going to isn't he oh, injured? injured oh yeah he uh, tore both his rotator cuffs that's right then uh, yeah. Braun Strowman is winning without a shot of a doubt <laughs> Like, why even have a steel cage match? This is such a lopsided match. I, I, and it sucks because Kevin Owens is my boy. He's my number one favorite wrestler. 
He's my dude, but I can't, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't see him winning this match. <laughs> Can I? Unless he finds a way to, like, handcuff Braun Strowman to the rope or something. Kevin Owens ain't winning this match. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be Strowman. It, it sucks because these guys are both great. And it's just... This this feud is literally in the porter potty. I don't really care about <laughs> what happens here. <laughs> this feud is absolute shit. Yeah, yeah it's, this feud is the shit. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be upset. I would be upset, but I wouldn't care because I probably just wouldn't watch it. I'll turn to something else. If Kevin Owens got someone else to fill in for him for this match. And who do I think oh, of that's okay. big? And Nicholas? get to Braun Strowman's level, and they big can show? have a shitty big match in a cage. Great Cully, big guys. Yep, yeah, big. You said a big show. <laughs> well, Big Show doesn't fit in the Porter Potty, so he can't. He yeah, can't so, join the team. Okay, so Braun Strowman, <laughs> you're picking Braun Strowman. I'm gonna assume Michael Michael Chow is picking Braun Strowman. Uh, yes, but one thing I do. Oh, is, yes, we uh, all pick Braun Strowman. I, I, I really want – well, number one, I want this to main event, not the match we're going to talk about after this. But I want this to main event, and honestly, right after he wins, I want Braun Strowman to get on the mic. And I want him to freaking just scream at Brock Lesnar say, hey, I have this money bank briefcase. It says I can cash it in any time, but the champion is not showing up, okay? <laughs> so I want, I want to call Brock Lesnar. They need to do something like that. Shit. They have to do what yeah, they did I'm in the UFC, to... but that's why I wish WWE would not be so PG. I think you should have Braun Strowman come out after the match going, Brock Lesnar, you want to call Daniel Cormier? Brock Lesnar, I'm coming for you, motherfucker. And then, like, yeah. <laughs> sh- shove the briefcase into the camera. Like, that would just be amazing. But WWE is too PG. They can't do that. They can do Braun Strowman say, will... Brock Lesnar, I am coming for your championship title, and you're going to get these hands. It it, uh, it it was really weird, the fact they didn't advertise anything involving Brock Lesnar in the UFC on Monday night. But I heard Vince didn't want any type of advertisement because, number one, they're not sure if they can get Brock Lesnar for SummerSlam. And two, they don't want to re- remind the fans that this guy's not showing up, which is, you know, yeah. I think, I agree, I think, logic in the WWE. But, oh, I, I think, we, no- I think we noticed. Go ahead, Brian. I'll, I'll let you finish. No, I just um... – I'm no, literally I'll let you just... finish. Go I'm ahead. done. I'm done. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I agree with Cuba Girl. Uh, she loves Braun, but turned him into a comedy. He, he's turned into a comedy act now, and it, it's true. He, he's he's being less and less of the monster among men and being the friendly giant among men. The whole show is a comedy act. Literally. It is, it is a joke. It is a joke. I agree with you there. So uh, we all three picking Braun Strowman, the obvious pick here. Talk about the United States Championship match. Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura, which I did call my last pay-per-view, if you guys remember. I knew that, or I read the the small rumor that Shinsuke Nakamura was going to be put into the U.S. title feud, and it's come to fruition here. Um, it's interesting. I can't, I can't really pick a winner here. I can see Jeff Hardy dropping to Nakamura, and Nakamura getting a run with the U.S. title. I can see him doing stuff with him with that, but... Uh, Clearly, Vince doesn't like to book Nakamura in a winning role anymore, so I'm just going to pick Jeff Hardy. Why not? I mean, what, what Je- they make Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura win the World Rumble and say, yeah, fuck you, you ain't winning shit at WrestleMania. Hey, remember when you had that little feud when Jinder Mahal came in and said, hey, oh, look, Jinder's back. He's got, oh, he's on roids. Oh, man, I'll take the title off Nakamura. He doesn't need it. No. No, I have no faith in Nakamura anymore either. So I'd love to see him win the U.S. title here, but... Uh, Looking at the year Shinsuke Nakamura's had and his bad luck with animals and booking, um, I'm just going to pick Jeff Hardy. Yeah, I'm going with Nakamura as well. The only reason, well, two reasons. As is... well, I picked Jeff Hardy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going with <laughs> I'm going with Nakamura because one, let's give Nakamura something to do. Um, but the bigger news of the week, I guess, is Jeff Hardy's been dealing with some pretty bad hip injury or a leg injury. So I think they're going to get it off of him just to give him some time to, to recover and, and have Nakamura, you know, have something to do for Nakamura. Well, then I changed my pick. Nakamura's going to win. Wow. I'm actually, <laughs> uh, I got, I got a 1% increase in happiness for him. There you go. Yeah. And it's, it's strictly because Jeb's hurt and that's the sad part. Mm-hmm. 
He's like, sorry, Jeff. I know speaker English. I know speaker English. Uh, <laughs> Would you like some uh, fried dog? Oh, stop. Okay, that's enough of that. Michael Chow, what is your prediction for this match with Jeff Hardy and uh, Shinsuke Nakamura? You know what? Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. There, that's it. No, but you, you know what? Okay, no, no, no. Okay, tell you what. Since you guys both picked Shinsuke Nakamura, I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy. But I think what's going to oh. happen is that. Oh. No, 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 let me explain. Let me explain. You, you're not going to pick what? Shinsuke Nakamura dog bike? <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. But uh, uh, what Brian says uh, with Jeff Hardy being injured, I feel Jeff Hardy's going to win. But then afterwards, Shinsuke Nakamura is going to lose it. And he's just going to beat the hell out of Jeff Hardy afterwards. So he kind of just. You know, he, he gets put on the injured list, and then he has to vacate the title, and then maybe they might set up some type of tournament, a United States tournament, to mm. the finals taking place at SummerSlam. Oh, so. my God. We just booked it. So, <laughs> weeks ago, okay, so Jeff Hardy loses or wins. Nakamura does the heel, gets his heat, beats the crap out of Jeff. Who comes out to save Jeff? The fucking dog. The dog comes <laughs> out. Shinsuke Nakamura versus the oh dog. The U.S. title. Mm. SummerSlam. Book it. Oh. Just just book it. Please book it. I Vince, mean, I know you're listening. Well, I will buy every fucking dog SummerSlam shirt. SummerSlam having that match. I'll buy every dog you know, shirt. Take. Put the fucking you know, collar you know, back on uh, on Ellsworth. Have the dog nation run run wild all over this place. Well, you know Vince is going to love the idea of having two big dogs at SummerSlam. So there you go. Book oh it in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then you have the Big dog versus the dog at WrestleMania. Just, it Jesus writes itself. Christ. Can Road Dog be <sighs> in there throwing a the triple threat? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, this is what we've got into. Anyways, guys. speaking <laughs> of the big dog. Hey, dog. WWE can be a joke. Why can't we make jokes on this podcast? Huh? That's oh. right. <laughs> We're getting into the. Uh, it's, it's it's actually supposed to be the main event tomorrow night. Uh, we got Bobby Lashley against Roman. Right. Yes, that's right. Crickets. Because who the fuck cares about this feud or this match? This like I don't care. I don't care. We, we didn't. We didn't care about this match at first. Then they put the stipulation of number one contenders on it. Then they said, "No, we're not going to have the number one contender match, but we're going to have the match anyway." So they made us not care again. And now it's the main event still. Yes. If you're going to have the match. Just fuck it. Make it the make it the number one contenders match nope, for no nope, nope, because it's Roman Reigns. The title comes. Because it's Roman Reigns got to have it in the main event. He's got to be in the main event. Can't have not be in the main event. I I, I still to I am astonished that they're continuing with this Roman Reigns uh, agenda and him being the still the top guy. It, it astounds me. He's not. There's no. He's literally going to be. This is going to be. It. Like, how is he going to? How does he love? Knowing that he's gonna go on for the rest of his career, never being over with the fans, like completely over, and always being the guy that literally eighty percent of the wrestling community hates, and he's and never gonna, he just, he, he, it's never gonna work. I don't understand why they they keep trying to make it work. I don't understand. And the the frustrating part is, the dude isn't that bad in the ring. You know, give him you know. Some credit. Okay. I'll give him some credit, it's, it's but he's a, not a top star. He's not no, the he, guy he, that to, to even. I'm talking about his wrestling skill only. He's not the guy to be the top guy. No, but in today's wrestling world, he's not. Absolutely not. No, I, I agree. He isn't the greatest wrestler in the world, but it's more frustrating that we know that WWE knows this is what we don't want, and they just keep force feeding us. It's like. You you guys can have your Roman Reigns project and and do whatever you want, but just position it in another place on your card, or right. have have Roman be the IC champion for the rest of his life. Who cares? But we're just tired of the same. It's literally the same. Yeah, the same. It's it's Roman wins. Eventually Roman leads wins. to. Roman it, wins. It's literally Roman's the like, last two years or three years is literally been eventually leading to Roman versus Brock every time. This, it's in a fucking little circle. It, I was about to say this is worse than the John Cena Golden Era because at least Cena had, you know, multiple dozens of opponents. Of, of opponents. Yeah. But we're, we know that the whole fucking year is set up for Roman versus Brock. At it's, the end of the year. it's a circle. It, they want they go each direction. They always meet up back for for far, four or five years now, and it's just 
why do I care yeah. about this? The experiment this? is over. They need to stop. They need to cut it, cut it out. You have your top guy in the company, and I can tell you I know who it is right now at the top of my head and who they can be pushing as a top guy because he's super over the crowd. He's a 10 times better wrestler than Roman Reigns, and he's great on the mic, and he, he's great at presenting himself. He sells merch. Why isn't Seth Rollins your top guy in the company? He's, he's got he's a the look. He's a total package. He is, and he's not being pushed to the top. That's what literally gets me. I don't understand. They have him. They could be making so much money with this guy. And you could transcend into that level that they want Roman Reigns to be. But they won't do it. He's great as a heel. He's great as a baby face. Seth Rollins is the man. That his, his, his literally his one nickname. He is the man. But they won't do it. They have this... It's Vince McMahon's fetish with fucking Samoans and and the look that Roman has. And he's terrible on the fucking mic. Oh, he's not terrible on the mic. He's terrible on the mic when he reads the force-fed script that they give him. He's good when he's fucking talking on his own like his feud with John Cena. If he was that Roman all the time, I wouldn't have a problem with the guy. He just he, he sticks to that same and now he's stuck in this like trying to be the underdog soft big dog bullshit. And uh he's doing lately it's just fucking not working like nothing to do with this guy's working so at a certain point you have to get to they have to realize that it's not working anymore and they have to quit it and it's like they they're building they keep saying they want roman to be the guy they they're doing this because they're trying to build roman to be the next face of the company they they need a, a company guy they need the next john cena but you're completely overlooking guys like styles overlooking guys like rollins that are Daniel already Bryan. that. They, they're already there. Daniel Bryan is it's literally like, the most over since Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes. He's, <laughs> you, you're, you're trying to build Roman Reigns into something that you already have on your roster. Time. Hello? I think Bryan cut out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think I think I think Vince McMahon just cut Brian's mic. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, nope, not on my show. Get him off uh, my show. Cut there he is. He's back. Vince McMahon cut oh. your mic off for a bit. <laughs> you didn't like where you were going. <laughs> Sorry, it's because Vince, <laughs> Vince knew Vince knew he was losing his last fan, and he just he's got to cut that mic. <laughs> I I honestly believe it now. I can't. I, we were joking at first. I honestly believe it. He's like, oh fuck, I'm losing the last one. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, you, you're right, Brian. You're right. They have the the, the people there that could be the, the next top guys or a couple of the top guys. They just they won't pull the trigger. Like, no, well, no, we're going to keep Roman no matter how. We we don't care. It, oh, it's booze. Oh, it's a, they just they make excuses. Oh, he gets booed. He gets booed. Oh, it, it's a, they're, their excuse. It's a reaction. Oh, he gets a reaction out of people. They make noise. Like, the fucking the stupid. Their excuses are literally horse shit. They just make themselves sound more stupid. And it's right in front of their faces. Roman Reigns comes out, and he's booed out of the fucking building. And Everywhere. Seth Rollins', Seth Rollins music's hit, and it's, you can hear Burn It Down all the way in fucking across the country. The fucking pop yeah, is so big. Literally. You know, and it's like... And, and, it, and <laughs> it's funny because they put him in tag matches. So one second, here comes Roman, boo... Seth music hits, oh yeah, you know, oh, but but they're making noise. It's the same noise. It's not the same fucking noise. No, it's not. It's like, oh my god. It, it, I, I, I don't, don't want to go on a rant here because it's yeah. really starting to piss me off. Yeah. Because I, like I said, I've been a fan since I was a little girl, and just growing up watching stuff a like Austin. Girl. You heard me. You heard me. Growing, growing up watching Austin, growing up watching The Rock, Jericho. Is it? I, I was watching the um, King of the Ring, um, Foley Undertaker match the other day, yeah. and just seeing the crowd reaction. I was I was watching it in bed with my girlfriend. Just, yeah. just the crowd reaction, just the the genuine excitement on people's faces is you don't even see that anymore. It, no. It's. You, you're literally going to a WWE show just because you know the name WWE, yeah. and they're in town. But you know you who know, you I see to... it with? Seth Rollins. Look at the crowd yeah. when Seth Rollins comes out. Everyone's was... fucking on their feet. Everyone about... is going ape shit. <laughs> the closest thing they have to that right now is the burn it down chat, the Finn Balor arms. And the yes. It, it, 
and the yes, exactly, and and the Rusev day. Yeah. But they choose to they choose to, to, to put it aside to Roman for Roman. They do it for Roman. <laughs> and it's like you're you're putting all your eggs in this basket when you have the whole fucking chicken farm ready to go on the side. Yep. It's like I don't I don't understand. It's like me trying to search for a golden nugget, a, a million dollar nugget, but I I have a million dollars of pennies on the side I don't take. It's it's fucking stupid. You know, it's the same thing. It's just not what he wants being Vince. Vince, I know you're listening. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's like, it's it's stubbornness, and and you're starting to see it reflect on the ratings because now now we're just tired of it. You know, I, I'm someone mm-hmm. that used to watch Raw religiously. I fell asleep this week on Raw. Oh. SmackDown, I I watched in pieces throughout the week because I'm not going to sit there and watch SmackDown. It's it's not fun anymore. No. At first, you know what? Even it was kind of cute at first. The Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar. You're like, oh, okay, it's kind of funny, but it's just getting old and sad now. Right, right. And I don't, I don't know what to do anymore about this show because mm-hmm. it's not, it's not fun anymore. As much as we we joke and and talk about the wrestling and the storytelling, at the end of the day, it's supposed to be fun, and it's it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, it's right. just not. It's not for me. It's not for for yeah. for for you it's not you. we were talking about NXT being the adult show the NXT NXT is the closest thing to wrestling being fun we have right now and you know it's hilarious and, how NXT does it with such I can't say budget how, but how low like they do it in an arena that holds maybe a thousand people they do it with limited budget for their promos and stuff but what is the main what is the main thing that they focus on in NXT that they don't do in the main roster the storytelling and the wrestling the main roster simple. is just filled with promotional garbage, useless rinse and repeat crap, and just overkill on everything. And it's too long. And she's one hour a week. That's all you need. I love for NXT to be two hours. I think they honestly, I think NXT could do a two hour show really good. And it, I think they, if they decide to expand by doing live shows around the United States in arenas that can hold maybe a max of two thousand to five thousand people, they could easily sell out every single one of them. And it would be an awesome show, but I'm glad. And look, what they're doing all that and becoming the best show on on the week for what they have right now in a in a place the same place every goddamn week, and they do tapings. They're not even live, and they're still better. Exactly, it's it's taped, and there's more effort into taping that than there is a live TV show. Look at this. Look at this card. We've seen every single one of these matches already on Raw or SmackDown the last two months. Yep. Why do I Why do I give a shit about this? Yeah. Oh no, we added stipulations. Ooh. ooh. Yeah. But uh, we, we've we've ranted for like twenty minutes now, Brian. I want to know Michael Chow's opinion on this main event match or Extreme Rules. Sorry to cut you off, Michael. But <laughs> oh yeah, huh? You know what? Your guys' debate much better than probably watching this Sunday. In fact, like honestly, <laughs> no, no, guys. Like seriously, I don't even know if I'm gonna even watch on Sunday. It gets to a point where it's like, should I even watch? Do I even care? You know, yeah. it's it's. It's it's going pretty bad, you know. Around it's a little part of you, though. It's Michael. It's a little part of you that wants to watch because we always hope that it gets better. You know, you know. Funny you should say that. I'm more curious on watching this Sunday to see how bad it's going to be more than oh, is right. it going to be a good show? And that's bad. You're getting in a yeah. bad place when fans now tune in to not watch whether it's going to be good, but just to see how bad the show is going to be. Because, yeah. dude, the last pay per views have been absolutely horrible. WrestleMania card was great, was not good. Okay, Backlash, not good. And it just keeps on going lower and lower. I mean, last year we said that I, I, I thought last year was pretty bad. But this year it hasn't gotten any better. But to cut to the chase, I'm going to say, um, you know, I, I don't – if this is the main event, but in my mind I feel like Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens going to main event. But if this is the main event – I don't. I feel like the fans are going to walk out, it's and they can't have Roman. this. It's yeah. Roman's the main event, no. but I wouldn't doubt them because at that point you're what, like five hours into a pay per view, people are tired. Do they really want to stick around and watch Bobby Lashley exactly. and Roman Reigns? So based off that, I got to go with Bobby Lashley because I just, I just, the fans are just going to walk out, Ooh. and I feel like Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam would just be. Better yeah. marketing because we don't want to see yeah. this match again. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, yeah. and then what? Bobby Lashley. Um, I don't watch a lot of. (laughs) (laughs) 
get out of here. But <laughs> I mean, Brian, do you watch a lot of UFC and MMA? Uh, the big fights I watch on UFC. Uh, yeah, I know the, the, some some guys. Isn't Bobby Lashley? He has a pretty good win record, right? Isn't yeah, like he, wasn't he, was, he, wasn't he was never. Bellator, he was in Bellator. He? Yeah. he was in Bellator. Well, okay. He never made it to UFC, but um. The, I, the, so, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Brian, go. Okay, so I feel like if they really, because you, I think you talked about this earlier, uh, Brian, about how you you think that WWE and USC are kind of in cahoots. They are kind of advertising together, joining forces. I feel like Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, knowing the fact that Brock Lesnar is going to be fighting, you know, the current UFC champion soon, it would make sense to have Brock Lesnar go over. Bobby Lashley in a wrestling match and be like, oh, this is a a, a guy who used to be in mixed martial arts. Brock Lesnar beat him. He'll probably beat the uh, the UFC champion. Who is it right now? Is it Daniel Cormier? Yes. He's a champ. Yeah. So I, I, I can see them booking it that way to have Brock Lesnar versus uh, Bobby Lashley. So I'm going to have Bobby Lashley right. win and then have Bobby Lashley go against um, Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, and mm. then based off that, I really hope the WWE Championship main event SummerSlam because I feel so bad. WWE Championship has not main evented a pay-per-view needs in a to. long and time. And AJ Styles is your best wrestler in the company. Like, why? That's why he's taking the back seat right now, and it's really ticking me off. So, uh, and we'll see with that. I, I'm about to I'm about to piss off a lot of people, but the only reason Vince and the UFC is working together, <laughs> and it's gonna sound crazy is that Vince is going to use this to get Roman over. So Roman is going to lose. You're going to have Lashley versus um, Lesnar at SummerSlam. Lesnar's going to look like a badass. He's going to hold both titles until next year's WrestleMania, which will be after Lesnar's UFC fight. You have Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar, the guy that is the guy that holds both UFC and WWE's belt. Another WrestleMania with Brock and Roman? I'm, I am calling it now. A, Roman is going to be the guy to beat uh, Lesnar with both titles. To be honest, I was debating on going to New York again this year for Mania, just doing a Mania back to back, but I've I've really lost complete interest in doing that. So I'm I mean, gonna, it's, it's I'd rather it's, come down to see you guys for Survivor Series than doing that shit. Yeah, let's make a Survivor Series party. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, throw, we'll, we'll have our towels ready. We'll throw them yeah. in. We'll, we'll, we'll do a live three man podcast, all of us together. There you go. Party at my house. <laughs> there you go. Take over, baby. <laughs> uh, so you guys are going with... Okay, so both of you guys are going with Bobby. I'll mm-hmm. go with you guys. I'll pick Bobby Lashley. Who cares? All right. Honestly, because it's it's the who cares pick for me. <laughs> well, but, no, in in a way, I, I feel like this is good because we're all making good points on why yeah. we want Bobby Lashley to win, and it has really nothing to do with us not liking Reigns. It just feels yeah. like Bobby Lashley, just marketing-wise, he's just a lot better. You yeah. know, this... You know, so we don't have to hear about the uh, the Roman Reigns fans on on the Twitterverse going, oh, you know, you're just jealous. You don't want Roman to win right. because you hate him. You know, this and that. No, we're making logical points. Bobby mm-hmm. Lashley, it just seems a better pick. But I'm sure the Roman fans want to see Roman versus Lesnar again because why not? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, have it have it at WrestleMania B. <laughs> WrestleMania B. Anyways, guys, uh, that's our prediction. So we uh, gave our predictions for the match. You guys let us know how we did. Let us know on Twitter if you guys have any crazy predictions or anything like there or out there. Um, but anyways, guys, before we end the show, just want to let you guys all know that uh, thank you for tuning in live right here on Spreaker. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app. It allows us to do a live shows right here on um Spreaker, you guys can chat with us. We're the people in the chat list today. Thank you for joining the chat. Uh, Cappy, uh, Datila, Cuba Girl, Tiffany, everyone who's uh, our silent listeners that listen to Don't Want to Chat, thank you for listening as well. Um, you can also check us out on Stitcher Radio if that uh, fancies you, or iTunes. And with iTunes, ladies and gentlemen, if you drop a five star comment and or a five star rating, sorry, and a comment, you'll automatically be entered into win a special small gift from us at the podcast. You, all you have to do is comment and leave a five star rating, and it will be in contact with you. Um, either uh, DM us on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP or send us an email at nhbwpodcast at gmail dot com. You can also check out if you uh, listen to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash nhbwr, and while you're there, hit the subscribe button, the little bell icon for all up- updates, and they'll all be into your inbox, so go check us out, guys, on all three of those platforms, um, but I have nothing else uh, to say, guys, do you have anything else to end, guys? Um, 
No, I mean, sorry, guys. If, if it sounds like we're just bitter over the WWE main roster product, it's just mm-hmm. if you don't give us anything to talk about, we're we have nothing mm-hmm. to talk to you about, and we're just kind of we're trying to make the best of what we have here, <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> you know what? I feel like there will be a time where Vince is going to lead to the XFL. Triple H will probably take over the majority of the shows, and I feel like we're going to be on this podcast talking about how great the show is, how happy we are, and dare I say, I can't believe the second WrestleMania outdid NXT TakeOver. So, I hope so. <laughs> no, 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 there will be a time where we can say, I can't believe it. Hell has frozen no, Michael, over. I, I WWE hope... review actually did better than TakeOver. I hope Triple H actually cancels that second WrestleMania if he ever comes in charge. Um <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for episode 106 of the podcast where we uh, talk about NXT, the WWE. We also reviewed Extreme Rules in this week's episode as well. Right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say. Pun intended. Like I said, guys, you can check us out on YouTube, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. If you're on iTunes, give us that five-star rating. Drop a comment. And let us know how we did on there. You can also check us out again. Uh, like I said, I said speaker already. So uh, that's going to do it, guys. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Um, I am always joined by my two co-hosts, the host from the West Coast. He is Hollywood, Michael Chow, and uh, the main event, or, or sorry, main roster Modern day Maharaja Brian at Heel Turn 21 on Twitter. You can also follow Michael Chow on Twitter at Michael Chow TV, myself at Real Kyle Masters. And guys, we are always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. The real